these questions real quick. And so for those who don't know, what is Malort? Malort is a, an, um, a digestive. Um, it, it is a liqueur that whose primary flavor is wormwood, which is a very unusual botanical. Um, and we can talk more about its flavor. Sure, I mean, do you want to go into that or? <laughs> sure. So, <laughs> Malord has quite the reputation. Uh, if you look on the internet, you'll find lots of things like very colorful descriptors of Malort's taste and flavor and the experience of drinking it. Some people have called it the worst tasting liquor in the world. Uh, they are entitled to their own wrong opinion, or maybe it's the right opinion. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, if we if we talk a little bit about the where it comes from, it is a traditional Swedish um, after dinner uh, drink. And like a lot of cultures, uh, it's an Amaro, actually, but it's a very one note sort of Amaros. Uh, when you think of Italian Amaros, for example, you'll think of, of lots of you know complicated flavors, but the thing that all Amaros have in common is a bitter finish. And Malort certainly has that because wormwood is one of the most bitter substances on the planet. And Malort's really its only uh, major flavor is wormwood. Now wormwood also supplies some herbalness. Um, it brings in hints of grapefruit, um, but it's so, I would liken it, drinking a shot of Malort to taking a whole grapefruit and just taking a big bite out of it. And you get everything. You get the flesh, you get the pith, the white part, which is very bitter. You get the juice, you get the peel, which is very citrusy. Yeah. So that's kind of what it's like. Um, so you talked a little bit about this, but so how did Malort start? What's what's his history in making its way into the United States? So a, a, a gentleman named Carl Jepson emigrated to the great city of Chicago in uh, the early 1900s from southern Sweden. And um, he brought with him something, a recipe for something called Besk, B-E-S-K, the, the Swedish say it, Besk. And um, and that is uh, and and that's what it what Malort is. It's wormwood soaked into alcohol with a little bit of sugar, maybe some other flavorings added. And so, like a lot of immigrants, you know, he brought a recipe from home with him, and he made it at home. And then um, this crazy experiment with prohibition happened in the United States. And Carl was an enterprising guy, and like everybody at that time, was trying to make some money. And he realized that he could sell his homemade Swedish besk as a tonic or a medicine. And so he did that. He went uh, around door to door in Chicago, particularly in the Andersonville neighborhood, which is our uh, historically Swedish neighborhood, and sold it. And he got away with it because every now and then the feds would harass him for selling, you know, what clearly people were drinking as alcohol. And he'd say, yeah, well, it's medicine though, take a taste. And he would pour them a shot and they would say, oh, no, nobody would ever drink that for pleasure. So <laughs> go on, sir. That's that's how it happened. So uh, Chicagoans already knew about and he, he called it Malort. So Malort is the Swedish word for wormwood. And um, so he, he called it that. And um, then when Prohibition ended, he knew that he was not going to be able to compete with the big all of the big alcohol producers that were going back into business. And so he sold the recipe to a Chicago-based uh, distillery owned by a family, and they started producing Jepson's Malort at, right as Prohibition ended in 1933. So besides that little change in ownership, have there been other changes in ownership inside Malort? So uh, so Carl sold the recipe to a man named George Brody, who was, or actually to the, the company that George's family owned. And um, eventually George sold off all of the other liquor brands that they had because he just wasn't that interested in them, and, but he loved Malort. And so he ran Malort as his company for many, many years uh, until he passed away in 1988. And he then left the company uh, in his will to his secretary, uh, Patricia Gablick. And after George's wife died, uh, Patricia became his best friend. 
And um, so she ended up with the company and she had it until we bought it from her uh, just five years ago. So we're just the third owners of the brand in uh, you know, 90 years now. We're cel celebrating our 90th birthday on December 5th. Oh, wow, congratulations. Yeah. So, well, we're not there yet. So hopefully, you know, we don't get run in by the feds before then. <laughs> yeah. Fingers crossed. So how important is branding to Malort? And I've, I've seen a bunch of posters here and they're, they're really, really funny in particular. So what's the story behind the branding for Malort? Yeah, what, what's really fun about Malort is that because it's got such a unique flavor and um, it, it's got such a reputation that people who love it and people who hate it tend to make up our slogan. So we really have never come up with a slogan ourselves, We've never had to. And uh, so you get things like, um, tonight's the night you fight your dad. Um, you know, uh, when you want to unfriend somebody in person, uh, all sorts of things. And so our job as, as the owners of the brand is really to kind of stay out of the way of it. Um, we're not really trying to come up with, you know, any anything slick or really that different. We really just try to feed out the really great um, comments and memes and ideas and videos and all kinds of things that the fans of Malort um, are putting out there on a regular basis. We get massive amounts of fan, fan mail, you know, uh, Instagram, um, email, and then we have just the, just this year alone, we've received no less than 15 wedding invitations. Oh, wow. um, uh, not to us personally, but to to Malort. Please come to our wedding. <laughs> so people are just crazy about it. And it's really, um, it makes our job kind of easy. We just have to make it and, you know, keep a good sense of humor about it. That's our job. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's very, it's a very interesting place to be in really. Like a lot of people's knowledge, it's just word of mouth, you know, I think that's, that's a very cool thing to have with the product. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Has the recipe for Malort changed throughout the years? Um, it's, you know, we, we, have, um, we have a bottle here that's from about the late 1960s, early 1970s. And the basic, you know, it's, I mean, it's been in the bottle a long time, so we drink, you know, a little bit every now and then. It's basically the same. Um, the, the main thing is that the, since wormwood is the primary flavor in it, and that's a natural ingredient, um, it's not the most common of ingredients for flavoring in food and beverage. It's most mostly used um, in supplements because it actually does have some medicinal properties to it. Uh, it, it settles your stomach. Um, it can be good for, it's kind of, you know, one of those things that's sort of like good to have in your blood. Um, I don't, my herbal, you know, my herbal um, uh, <laughs> medicine degree is not uh, up to snuff, but um, but so the, the reason I mention that is that we are probably the largest food and beverage user of Wormwood um, in the country, if not the world. And it's, but it's hard to get our hands on the same supply all the time. So the worm is always changing and we sort of adjust around it a little bit. But every batch, you know, over time will come out a little different, but the basic idea is there are lots of wormwood. Um, it should have a little bit of gentleness right up front, um, which is just from the very minimal amount of sugar that we use in it. And then you should just get a nice blast of herbal and then big old bitter on the back end. That's kind of the idea. Why should people try Malort? What would be your, your pitch for people to try it? Well, I think it's delicious. I, I it's really my go-to. Um, I drink it with um, with club soda. I just drink it by itself. We have a barrel-aged version, which is a real sipper. Um, so I think it's it's delicious. If you like bitter things, you will most likely like Malort. Um, but I, anybody who's just sort of curious about what all this you know talk is and and uh, this crazy reputation. Um, it's just fun to try and it really uh, is best if you do it with, you know, for the first time, if you do it with somebody who has done it before, um, you know, so, uh, it, it, but just seek it out. It's, it's an experience and you'll never forget it. And there really literally is nothing else uh, that tastes like it. You sort of touched on this. How, how would you describe the taste of the Lord? Um, so, uh, you know, the, um, Probably the best way to describe it is a little, it's got a little bit of a surprise factor. And even, you know, I've had probably as many shots as any of, of Malort as anybody on the planet. 
Um, and it's because when you very first taste it, and uh, it, people do shots of it, but I also, I really like to sip it. And so if you take sort of like a, kind of a half shot, let's say, um, you're gonna get there, if, if you kind of can slow your brain down a little bit on the whole tasting experience, what you'll get is this really nice um, kind of, it, it's, it's like sweet grapefruit juice. It's probably, you know, that kind of pink grapefruit juice. It's, it's tart, but it's, it's got some nice sweetness to it. And so the very, like the, probably the first, you know, millisecond, your brain goes, oh, that's lovely. And then you get this big rush of um, kind of what the hell is that? Um, because the herbal side of wormwood is earthy. Um, it's got sort of a, a, a deep, uh, deep woods sort of flavor. So your brain is a little bit confused on that because that's not something you would normally um, taste. And then usually then the alcohol follows right after that, which is, you know, a little bit of a burn. It's 35%. So it's not a, not a big burn. And then you get punched um, on the back of your palate uh, with this just bitter, just pure bitter flavor. And it's a sensation too. Um, that bitterness is physical. Um, and it lingers for a long time. <laughs> it does, yeah. It hangs around. It's like your buddy for the next, well, you know, until you have something else. <laughs> yeah. You said you have it with club soda. Is there anything else you'd kind of mix it with or do you prefer it just by itself? Um, it, it, it does have some pretty good cocktail applications. So for example, pretty much anything that's like got fruit juice, um, like in the tiki uh, kind of style, um, a little Malort, like a half an ounce of Malort added into um, a tiki drink is spectacular because it sort of balances out all the uh, kind of fruitiness and sweetness and gives you a little backbone of bitter on the back end. Um, it plays really well with anything that has grapefruit in it. Um, so grapefruit soda, like, you know, a, a, a Fresca or something like that. And, um, or like a grapefruit LaCroix. Um, and, but really probably the most famous cocktail that involves Malort is the Chicago Handshake, which is a shot of Malort with a beer back. Um, traditionally an old style, but you know, we, we always say use whatever's local. Um, but that's, that's the best selling Malort cocktail there is. Gotcha. I'll have to give that a try. Yeah. It, it, like the, the, the beer is a really nice follower to the bitterness of the Malort, um, because kind of the multi sweetness and the little bit of hops, which are themselves bitter, kind of just sort of like mellow the whole thing out. Who is your favorite musician? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm a Pat Metheny fan for since I was uh, 40 for more than 40 years. Um, yeah, he's probably my favorite musician of all time. But man, that's a little bit like ask, asking me, you know, like what's my favorite food? Um, there are so many. <laughs> but if I got to pick one, I'm going with Pat. Pat's great. Do you have a favorite Chicago musician? Um, I would say uh, Jeff Tweedy. Yeah. Jeff Tweedy, Wilco, um, just a, an institution, a, an amazing and prolific songwriter, great performer, um, and just a, you know, a great like Chicagoan. Do you have a favorite bar or restaurant in the few times you visited New Orleans? Um, wow, that's a, yeah, that's that's a tough one. Um, I mean, our, our favorite Malort bars are Black Penny and uh, Pep's Pub. Um, they are just total Malort stalwarts and, and just awesome, you know, awesome people.